to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Apostle, I got to a place that was full of unbelievers. Uh-huh, I'm listening. What happened? They looked at me, we just said, we just exchanged pleasantries and I left. You left? Nothing happened? From you? Through you? To them? Jesus was not revealed? Nothing happened? The sick were not healed? Demons were roaming around and you were there? And you left? You waved them, they waved you back? How about conferences that are put together and all kinds of attendants are there, both humans and demons. Day one, day two, day three, day four. They even came near the altar with the individuals who dropped the offering and went back and nothing changed. At the end of it, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, such an expensive confession, the love of God, and we call it the sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost. And at the end of it, those demons still go back. How about missionaries who go to crusade grounds and they come in the name of Jesus, they say, and they preach and they tell the people that Jesus is Lord. And when they are done, people just sit down and laugh at them. I don't mean to be sarcastic, but how about ministries that share boundaries with other facilities that may not be Christ-like in their operation? And yet for years as that church is there, there has not been any impact around. Listen, if you understand this, you will know that you have been given the power that transforms people. Where did you keep the reality of that life? It's not just by bragging and saying, I'm a man of God, I'm an apostle. No, great is the mystery of godliness. God lives in me. It is true. Brothers and sisters, find a way of believing this. God lives in me. It was not so when I was born because I was not born saved but somewhere around the story of my life I encountered him Jesus who is the son of the living God today he lives in me and I believe there are implications to this my life cannot be natural again everything I'm about my life has to carry that signature not just for the gratification of the flesh but the revelation of Jesus. So when someone comes to me and says, Apostle, nothing is working in my life. From pillar to post, my life is empty. What do you think I should do when I see such a person? I am happy that you have met me because I am a blessing to you. I can't be a cause. Me and Jesus can fail together. Me alone can fail. I agree. He will never fail. But since he has decided that this partnership is a salt covenant, inseparable, two of us cannot fail together. You carry this mentality. When you get into an office, you enter not as an employee, you enter as an ark. You have been entering as one who was employed. Who is being paid X amount of naira or dollars or pounds. That is the reason why you go through the limitation that comes with that system. But when you know that beyond salary, I am a blessing. Doors that has been trying. The company has tried and tried to get those doors open. Suddenly, when God wants to bless that company, he gives them the privilege of employing you. When you enter that office, 
you don't have to tell them you have come the manager returns back and says how many staff do we have oh 26 now 27 who was the last person employed and they said one one gentleman like that okay I've noticed in the last one week something has happened here something supernatural has happened have you noticed the kind of favor have you noticed that stealing has reduced in this company just because the man was there all the three thieves that used to steal they were caught red-handed people who have been stealing for five years nobody catching them with all the charms that they had an ark just came please hear what i'm telling you i'm teaching you truth from scripture you are not just an employee no you are not just a business partner what you are bringing is more than capital what you are bringing is the presence divinity the supernatural they bring you into a ministry as a pastor you are not just one of the 30 pastors no with all due respect every other person can believe what they believe but you know there is an implication i'm sharing with you my mindset i'm sharing with you my beliefs the mystery of godliness the mystery of godliness your life becomes an effulgence of signs and of wonders your life becomes a, a marvel first to you not because you are anything special in yourself ladies and gentlemen what i'm teaching you these are not just these are not cunningly devised fables these are truths that are provable god can live in a man you can have something you were not born with you can have something that was not given to you in a university you can have something that was not given to you in your nation the reality of the life of god at work in a human spirit listen please hear me listen to me our fathers of faith men like tl osborne men like rw shambach these men and women carried this revelation they came to africa they shifted climate with power and with grace ordinary men mighty god ordinary men powerful god ordinary men all wise god ordinary men el shaddai I can tell you why people continue to dishonor the Lord because our cities and respectfully speaking our churches are losing the supernatural element there's all kinds of cunningly divine fable, device fables manipulations of darkness the sick remain sick the oppressed remain oppressed all kinds of stories hear me now please listen in addition to the reality of eternal life as you walk with God you get to a point where the Holy Spirit begins to be introduced to you not just as one who brought the life of God but as God himself he begins to lead you through a process he does not just reveal power you shall receive power after 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 god does not empower you when he's building you he empowers you when he's sending you so when you come to jesus stop looking for power come to me it is the making that happens empowerment is at the point where you are being sent not when you are made listen to me because something is about to open up in your life believe me when i tell you this many of here you here looking at me are men and women of god most of what we do in church is just some jamboree of being disciplined young men and women most of what we do in church is not 
is not the supernatural it's just a manifestation of flesh from ill cultured men and women of God display of the flesh for the purpose of self glorification that your life becomes a perpetual threat to darkness not because of what you are saying but because of what you are carrying what you are carrying first before what you are saying you will be amazed to know what is happening to people now from the realm of the spirit all kinds of impartations all kinds of liftings this is not about joshua selman this is every believer's heritage in christ but hear me brothers and sisters there is one thing i know and this is why you came to church today listen to me somewhere in your christian experience when god is ready to begin to build you and announce you to the nations he exposes you to different dimensions and different levels of graces now listen to my story there was a time I have shared with you a few of my visions here just pay attention I'm in this vision and I'm seeing an endless sea of people from the north to the south the east and the west and then these people begin to cry to me and say apostle there is no food and there is no water and then I said who is the cause and they were all pointing to me it was a whole generation I said me why would I be that wicked and they said you are the one and then I made up my mind that I was going to go but I had remembered in that vision that there were some people who were trying to bully me they were trying to pursue me that's what even took me to that room to be hiding it was upstairs I made up my mind that if I perish I perish but I have to save these people as soon as I open the door here stands this giant ancient man with beards now I know he was the Holy Spirit but he stood there and he said give me your hands he said we will walk together my hands were so tiny in his hands and yet he held me and we began to move we began to move jumping from one level to the other i've shared with you my encounters because you are about to receive something tonight i was worshiping the lord many years ago and i was caught up in the realm of the spirit and then the lord speaks to me and says son from today i give you my presence as a gift I'm not sure I understood then what he was saying and then I see this huge being standing and he said from today he will walk with you I said what is his name and he said he's called the angel of the Lord's presence walk with you this is why you see some of these manifestations brothers and sisters everything God gives a man is meant for the body it's not the I told you the days of superstar Christianity is over we are too serious to just be glorifying flesh no the kingdom requires seriousness if you carry this mentality today brothers and sisters you go to a place where there are demon spirits it's impossible for that place to be quiet you don't have to be preaching just remember the ark has come blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he who comes in the name of our god Holy, holy, 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Look at me. The next time they ask you, what is your contribution in this company? Tell them I bring the ark. What is your contribution in this business? There are five business partners. We don't know why you are here. Because intellectually, we don't think you have any relevance. Tell them there is something that I bring. The ark. Karis Kodeba Lakatosia. I bring to this company the presence of God. I bring to this home the presence of God. I bring to this ministry the presence of God. I bring to this relationship the presence of God. Hear me? Please look at me. Listen carefully. You know, we live in a world that likes to bully people based on all kinds of privileges. And it's easy to look at someone and say you've never flown abroad. You come from a village. You are so dull. You are so daft. And the believer stands full of the presence of God and looking weak, feeling inferior, feeling beggarly. I was teaching our school of ministry students. Oh, there is what you have as a believer. I agree you may not have had the privilege to go around the world. I agree you may not have the privilege of a superior background. I agree you may not have the privilege of a superior sociological orientation. Oh, but there is one thing you have. 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 The presence of God. The life that brings the supernatural. The life of the supernatural. He put it in you. As you move, God is moving. As you talk, God is talking. As you stretch your hands, listen, listen. Look at me, we are going to pray. Do you know how arrogant it will sound for an ordinary human being to just suddenly believe that these are my hands, you are seeing them. What is special about these hands? What suddenly makes you believe that these hands can heal? Without this revelation, it is pride. Hands that you've been touching every day. A life that you've been touching every day. Can I tell you this? Let no one see you as a disadvantage again. You are not a minus to any system. If you understand what I'm teaching you. I have seen many, many sick people healed in my life. I have seen many people delivered. When men give the credit to me. I feel so embarrassed because they are not exactly right. Men who have understood this, they have changed their society and changed territories, carrying this gift of God to the nations. Next time you are going for a crusade, you are not just carrying a salmon. As that plane is flying you, you are getting God to that region. As soon as your feet steps on that ground, expect things to happen. Men should be the last of the people you impact. Begin to impact the spiritual sphere. You have arrived there by the power of the Holy Spirit. Supernatural changes begin to happen and you shift climates. Spare me a few more minutes. Please sit down. Let me teach you one or two things and then we'll pray. My spirit is fired up tonight. Now listen carefully. There are three revelations and three keys that sponsor the release of the supernatural. In as much as it is true that you have been called into supernatural living and the church is a supernatural church, there is an explanation as to our powerlessness. There is an explanation as to the fact that we are unable to produce the kind of result that brings glory to the name of the Lord. 
most times believers just believe that results end in the realm of finances or some kind of intellectual achievement so chances are that when you are financially blessed or you are intellectually sound you believe that you have all of the supernatural finding expression that is not true that is not true the first thing i want to teach you is how the supernatural is manifested you see in this kingdom the supernatural is a synergy between the word of god and the spirit of god the union of the word and the spirit i would learn this in a reinhard bonke crusade in 2004 i went to joss from kaduna to attend the reinhard bonke crusade when he came i was in that field i remember and i saw this man who came all the way from overseas and the ground was packed with probably tens of thousands of people hungry people desperate to receive from this veteran of the gospel who had traveled from nation to nation and i was there scattered in the crowd i remember standing there with hunger i was already in ministry i had already seen the power of god to a measure but i knew that there had to be more and he preached in his manner a very simple message and this is where some of us that god has committed a bit of the grace for revelation usually we do not have the patience to hear people sound very simple because it almost looks insulting very simple childlike kindergarten kind of expression but when he was done listen carefully he was about to minister the baptism and then to pray for the sick and he was just trying to take water i was part of the tens of thousands of crowds suddenly my eyes opened right there in that crusade ground i thought other people were seeing it suddenly i see this bird as big as this auditorium if not bigger than it just moving round hovering round the entire space where the crusade was happening it had all kinds of silvery bands tied to its wings just like that it was not flapping them it was just moving i was looking what is this brilliance beauty as though the sun was in the bed and then the holy spirit took me to genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 and 2 and the spirit hovered round the face of the waters why because the word of god was about to come and the holy ghost taught me in that encounter that it is the union of the spoken word and the movement of the spirit that produces the miraculous it was not in a bible study session i was there having an encounter in a crusade ground that's why you see when people come to church and are distracted is a spirit because you don't know the moment when your word will come i can be preaching now and in the midst of my sermon god can open your eyes and be showing you something else when i saw that do you know this when i was back from that vision i had backed the stage i didn't even know when i turned i knew i had caught something i knew that i was about to step into the realm of signs of wonders and i saw people healed i saw all kinds of dramatic miracles and i said my god so i can tell you this listen to me if you want to manifest the supernatural that you have received it is a union of the strength of the word of god in you and the ministry of the spirit this is what separates miracles from superstition the word and the spirit now there there is a big problem with the body of christ as far as the dynamics of the manifestation especially the charismatics and the pentecostals it's like there is a group that chose the spirit we are the spirit people 
we pray in tongues we pray we prophesy we do all of this doesn't matter whether we have respect for scripture or not i'm not being sarcastic you know i'm sent to the body and then there are those who are the word people forget about all those spirit things just teach the word both of them are incomplete it is the spirit and the bride that tells the word to come it is the spirit of god who hovered around the face of the waters but do you know when the spirit of god hovered around the face of the water creation did not happen until the word came and elohim said light be. but if elohim had spoken and the spirit of god did not hover there still will not be a miracle what does that tell you there are two principal tools or two principal platforms that the believers both access and manifest the supernatural number one is the ministry of the word what does that mean the word of god is powerful because all creation happens through the word let me give you a few scriptures lend me a few minutes colossians 1 16 media let's work together colossians chapter 1 and verse 16 please look up it says for by him were all things created how many things were created things that are in heaven things that are in earth visible and invisible look how powerful the word is so the word of god can create visible things like a job visible things like physical healing to a body visible things like opportunities invisible things whether they be thrones dominions principalities powers all things were created by him and for him john chapter 1 and verse 3 a scripture that we've worked on in this house all things were made by him and without him that means outside of his influence and outside of his partnership was not anything made that was made hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 it says who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person please look up it says and upholding how many things all things by the word of his power he holds all things including the person to help you he holds him by the word of his power including your destiny helper including the form that has your contract written on it it is held by the word of his power hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3 paul teaching us on faith he says through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of god so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear that means let it be let it not be new to you the material realm came from the immaterial realm just because it is unseen does not mean it is unreal it is only unseen to the optical eye but it is on is real very very real so the union of the word listen according to colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 the bible declares that the word of christ should dwell in us richly in all wisdom so the more the word of god becomes your obsession listen carefully the more you learn scripture the more you submit yourself to the ministry of the word you are empowering yourself to manifest the supernatural let me tell you what happens in the body of christ and this is why there is a high margin of error in our administering the supernatural we ignore the word all we look for is anointing all we look for is vessels all we look for is a bottle of oil or a bottle of some kind of emblem i'm not saying those things are wrong in themselves but all things start with the word the more you submit yourself to the ministry of the word the more you are opening yourself to the supernatural question how did wine come about when the feast remembered in in, in the wedding in in in, in john chapter 2 the first miracle of jesus according to the synoptic account of john water turned to wine it always starts as water if you want wine get water first if it is god that will turn that water to wine if it's god that will give you wine it will not start as wine 
it will start as water it is the word of god that you must have and then as you go that word is now turned to wine if it's a job that you need if it's god that will give you that job it will not start with a job it will start with the word it is as you engage in the word the word will now change to a job are you seeing it now if it is breakthrough you want and you go to god and say lord all i want is breakthrough god says go back to the word it is as the word prevails in your heart the word will now become that breakthrough if you look for things outside of the word you may never find them it is the word that metamorphoses into those things the word of God number two is the ministry of the Holy Spirit we see the classic dynamics of manifesting the supernatural in Ezekiel chapter 37 please give it to us very quickly Ezekiel 37 let's start from verse 1 Ezekiel 37 and the hand of the Lord was upon me the Bible says and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and he set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and he caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry verse 3 he said unto me son of man question now can these bones live and the prophet answered O Lord God thou knowest verse 4 he said prophesy unto these bones and say unto them O ye bones hear whose word you do the speaking but the word is not your own when you speak your word it will not happen God is the word but you are the voice like John said if you want to be the word yourself that one you are you are in trouble already the realm of the spirit will not respect your word it respects God's word even if a donkey speaks God's word the realm of the spirit will obey it prophesy upon these bones and say unto them O ye dry bones hear the word of the Lord verse 5 thus saith the Lord God unto these bones behold I will cause what breath are you seeing now that the first miracle that happened was breath to enter them first if there is no breath there cannot be life and you shall leave verse 6 and I will lay sinews upon you and I will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 7. So I prophesied not as I wanted, as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold a shaking and bones came together, bone to his bone. That means watch this if i disregard the ministry of the holy spirit i do not grow in my fellowship with the holy spirit it is true that i am a recipient of the life of god that divinity resides within me but i may never be able to manifest that reality listen carefully most believers continue to brag and boast that they are recipients of the life of god and it's a fact based on what the Bible says. But you see, let me tell you the truth. Releasing the reality of that life comes when you understand these dynamics. The word of God. The ministry of the word. You must engage with the word. You must stay with the word. What is the benefit of the word? Number one, the word of God shows you how God operates. Number two, the word of God exposes you to the boundaries of God's commitment to you. God is only committed to what he said to you, not what you want. It is your assignment to find out what he said that relates to what you want. God is all powerful, but that does not just mean he does anything anyhow. No. He is regulated by his word. The word of God defines the boundary and the coordinates of God's power. God's power does not just operate randomly. His word. So, if what you want is lifting, you cannot have lifting until you can find from scripture where God committed himself to you on that wise. Is there any assurance based on the word of God that he said he will lift you? 
Yes, there is such an assurance. Number one, the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day. Number two, Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. It says, if it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. It says that the Lord will set you on high above all nations of the earth. There is a condition is there any scripture that supports your advocating your rising yes yes arise shine for your light is come so you can carry these scriptures now you have satisfied the word component now you have to engage the spirit just because you have found the word does not mean the supernatural will manifest you now god is bound by his word because he has chosen to exalt his word even above his reputation i have found the word that guarantees that god can lift me that god will lift me based on his desire for me you must engage the ministry of the holy spirit it is the spirit that gives life to that letter hallelujah are we together now one of the ways we engage the ministry of the holy spirit for our profiting is through the priesthood ministry of prayer write it down the priesthood ministry of prayer you will never truly manifest the supernatural if you ignore the priesthood ministry of prayer do you know why he gave us the prayer language do you realize that the prayer language is connected to the holy spirit ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come in acts chapter 2 we do not see them receiving power we see them receiving tongues but what he said he never said you shall receive tongues he said you shall receive power but in acts chapter 2 we see them receiving tongues that means there is a relationship between that language of the spirit and the release of spiritual power if i tell you for instance that i am going to give you a thousand dollars a thousand dollars anything that comes from me to you is a thousand dollars suddenly you see someone holding a gift pack coming to you what should you suspect is in it because my commitment to you was not a gift packed my commitment to you was a thousand dollars so if I'm bringing you a gift pack a wise person will open it to say the thousand dollars you said must be there so if he said i will give you power and yet what you got in the very next chapter is a language there must be a relationship between that language and the power he said are we together yes most people do not pray and yet they want to command superior levels of the supernatural we have agreed here that god is not a magician can i tell you sincerely a generation that does not pray will truly be a powerless generation jesus himself recognized the presence of principalities and powers the bible says he is head of them you must get to a point in your life where you know how to engage the ministry of the holy spirit engaging the ministry of the holy spirit is not just saying holy spirit come no no you engage him as you build intimacy in prayer and you take advantage of that prayer language to release superior spiritual power power that can change circumstances the lord is my shepherd you are a man of god and you are trusting god to have a supernatural ministry there is no superstition about it it is the union of the word and the union of the spirit the holy spirit engaged in prayer then the holy spirit engaged in worship do you know let me tell you sincerely this our generation does not understand how worship changes people we sing a lot of songs but very few people understand the role of worship in spiritual empowerment we have mastered prayer but not worship I can pray for five hours eight hours ten hours 
but chances are if you worship for 15 minutes anything after that you consider it a distraction say look this worship is okay i've had the song i know it let me pray oh dear worship is a powerful atmosphere listen when you when you worship the lord is the protocol of the presence you now begin to create the atmosphere for the presence of god to be made manifest this is true he will not suffer my food to be moved i carry your presence everywhere who am i your mind is so full of me mortal man awesome god mortal man awesome god there is nothing special to us and in us by ourselves but when we learn how to engage that atmosphere the miraculous is atmosphere dependent you must learn how to not only carry the ark but carry the climate scientists today are laboring so much to master the art of simulating climate regardless seasons so they can make rainy season happen in dry season they don't there are i studied years ago a group of superstitious people in a part of africa called rainmakers these are people who know how to fraternize with spirits and change climate and you will watch videos where they would come and dance and do all kinds of things that don't make sense suddenly you begin to hear thunder and clouds forming and then rain comes they call them rain makers when you learn worship you become a real spiritual rainmaker. you can make any dry season can i challenge you go to an atmosphere where it looks like god cannot move go to an atmosphere where it looks like people there are times you get to a place where you see that there's no faith in the people they look at you and even you you wonder what brought you there i teach you learn to be a spiritual rainmaker. carry your climate with you don't just carry your bible alone carry your climate with you and when you lift your voice to the god of heaven and immerse yourself in worship i do not know anybody who truly works appreciably in the level of the supernatural that does not value worship genuine worship genuine worship genuine worship and you're setting your atmosphere can i tell you the best way is to combine all three worship prayer word fire oh dear you are praying and worship is playing and sometimes scripture is playing too don't say will i understand leave your mind this is spirit interaction how many of you have listened to messages and fell asleep and in the realm of the spirit you continued listening to it including the encounters and the impartation in that message you get up and you know that heaven is in this room i'm not alone i'm not alone i'm not alone powerful impartations saturate your atmosphere with worship and something is happening to you as a man of god you stand to minister the word of god and you are ministering with power as a business person saturate yourself with that atmosphere of heaven and go to the boardroom and you sit down and you are speaking they are looking at you but it's not you they are seeing their spirits are seeing someone else their minds cannot articulate it what is it about this man that we are seeing these are the mysteries of the kingdom now please hear me there is such an empowerment and a grace in addition to all that i've shared there is truly an engracing that god can give an individual for the supernatural for signs and wonders how does this grace work when this grace comes upon you number one 
this grace causes you to desire the word more than ever before this grace causes you to desire the presence of god more than ever before this grace causes you to desire fellowship with god it's not just a grace that makes you to go and start laying hands on the sick the grace operates by working on your desire the first way you know you have carried that grace is there is an unusual desire for the word of god there is no such thing as no time an unusual desire for prayer an unusual desire for fellowship you can lock yourself for a whole day as though you're a madman there is a grace that is working in you dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline